Welcome to the Rare History Channel. 7 Infamous Women of the 20th Century Underworld Throughout history, the criminal underworld has been overwhelmingly dominated by men. However, the 20th century saw a handful of daring women make their mark in this nefarious realm. These women, for all the wrong reasons, defied societal expectations and norms. Let's delve into the lives of seven of the most notorious women in the criminal world of the 20th century. Number 1. Stephanie St. Clair, the Queen of Harlem. Stephanie St. Clair, also known as Queenie, was an influential figure in the Harlem underworld during the 1920s and 1930s. Born in the French West Indies, she migrated to the United States in 1912. Determined not to let her humble beginnings define her life, St. Clair built a successful numbers racket in Harlem, earning her a fortune and the title Queen of Numbers. Her reign was unchallenged until mobster Dutch Schultz attempted to usurp her operations. In a bold move, she fought Schultz, successfully retaining control over her empire. Even after her retirement, she used her influence to advocate for the black community's rights, making her a somewhat controversial figure. Her story is not just one of crime but also resistance and resilience. Number 2. Bonnie Parker, the female half of Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie Parker, one half of the infamous duo Bonnie and Clyde, was a notorious American criminal during the Great Depression. Alongside Clyde Barrow, Parker embarked on a two-year crime spree from 1932 to 1934, robbing banks and small businesses and committing several murders. Despite the ruthlessness of their crimes, the duo became romanticized folk heroes. This was largely due to the discovery of a roll of film left at one of their hideouts, which contained playful pictures of the couple, including an iconic image of Parker with a cigar in her mouth and a gun in her hand. The couple's life of crime ended when they were ambushed and killed by law enforcement officers in Louisiana in May 1934. Number 3. Leona Helmsley, the Queen of Mean. Leona Helmsley, dubbed the Queen of Mean, was a billionaire New York City hotel operator and real estate investor known for her tyrannical behavior and extravagant lifestyle. However, her empire crumbled when she was convicted of federal income tax evasion and other crimes in 1989. Helmsley's arrogance was famously summed up in a quote attributed to her, only the little people pay taxes. This quote, whether she said it or not, stuck with her and solidified her image as a symbol of the greed and excess of the 1980s. She served 18 months in prison and, after her release, largely disappeared from the public eye. Despite her criminal conviction, Helmsley left a significant impact on New York's skyline with her real estate ventures. These women, from different backgrounds and with different stories, left an indelible mark on the 20th century underworld. Their notoriety stems not just from their criminal actions but also from their audacity to tread where few women had dared to before. While they're not role models, their stories provide a fascinating insight into the criminal world's darker recesses. Number 4. Fulan Devi, the Bandit Queen of India. Fulan Devi's life was marked by poverty, violence, and revenge, but also resilience and political power. Born into a low-caste family in rural India, she was married off at a young age, suffered domestic abuse, and later became involved with a gang of bandits. In 1981, she led a gang to massacre 22 upper-caste men in the village of Baymai in retaliation for her rape and the murder of her lover. This act of violence made her a wanted criminal but also a folk hero to many low-caste Indians. She evaded capture for two years before surrendering in 1983. After serving 11 years in prison, Devi entered politics and was elected to parliament in 1996, representing the poor and marginalized. However, her past caught up with her in 2001 when she was assassinated in retaliation for the Baymai massacre. Number 5. Myra Hindley, Britain's Most Hated Woman Dubbed the most evil woman in Britain, Myra Hindley was one half of the infamous Moore's murderers, alongside her lover Ian Brady. Between 1963 and 1965, Hindley and Brady kidnapped, tortured, and murdered five children, burying their bodies on Saddleworth Moor near Manchester. The shocking nature of their crimes and the fact that a woman was involved led to a media frenzy. Henley's peroxide blonde hair and cold demeanor only added to her infamy. 
She was sentenced to life in prison in 1966 and spent the rest of her life behind bars, consistently being denied parole despite her claims of reform. Henley died in prison in 2002, her name synonymous with evil in the British public's eyes. Number 6. Griselda Blanco, the Cocaine Godmother. Colombian drug lord Griselda Blanco, also known as the Cocaine Godmother, was one of the key figures in the Medellin cartel and a pioneer in the Miami-based cocaine drug trade and underworld during the 1970s and early 1980s. Blanco was known for her ruthless and violent approach to business, allegedly responsible for up to 200 murders during her time as a drug lord. Blanco's life was as tumultuous as it was brutal. She was incarcerated several times and was subject to multiple assassination attempts by her rivals. Eventually, she was shot and killed by a motorcyclist in Colombia in 2012, an ironic end considering Blanco is credited with inventing the idea of the motorcycle assassin who rode by and gunned down their target. Number 7. Virginia Hill, the Queen of the Mob. Virginia Hill, famously known as the Queen of the Mob, was an American organized crime figure. An Wundia, Alabama native born in 1916, she moved to Chicago as a teenager where she began her journey into the criminal world as a courier for mob money. Her striking looks and outgoing personality quickly drew the attention of high-ranking mafia members, helping her rise in the underworld's ranks. Most notoriously, Hill was the mistress of the infamous mobster Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, a relationship that was as tempestuous as it was passionate. While involved with Siegel, she helped him fund the development of the Flamingo Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, an iconic establishment that played a pivotal role in transforming the city into a gambling and entertainment hotspot. It was rumored that Hill was skimming money from the Flamingo Project, contributing to the financial issues that plagued the venture. Following Siegel's assassination in 1947, with some speculating that Hill had a role in setting him up, she continued her involvement with organized crime. Despite being under constant scrutiny from the FBI, she managed to avoid major legal trouble for many years. In the 1950s, Hill moved to Europe to avoid the FBI's scrutiny, living a life of relative luxury in Switzerland, France, and Spain. However, her later life was marked by mental health issues and financial instability. She died in 1966 under mysterious circumstances, with some speculating that she committed suicide, while others hinting at foul play. Virginia Hill's life was filled with intrigue, scandal, and high-profile relationships, marking her as one of the most renowned women from the criminal world of the 20th century. Her involvement with some of the era's most notable mob figures and her role in the rise of Las Vegas continue to fascinate historians and true crime enthusiasts alike.